Quickly, it's time for school, I shout in place for Patrick, whose plastic mouth doesn't do much talking on its own. I drop him into a canoe, an old Disney carriage. The town had flooded, so naturally, all the kids had to go to school in their canoes. School starting, Bridget, my twin sister, squeals in the wooden chair in the other side of our room, flicking an old orange feather. In a panic, I drag the rest of the brothers out of their makeshift beds and carefully arrange them in the canoe. I make the characters talk to each other about their worries on the way to school. Patrick has a big test. Dominic wants to befriend the girl next door. They have one mission, but their own worries. They are all their own people after all, and this is a people game. My sister and I would spend hours each day playing these games, each with their own dramatic plot lines and backstories. We had a full notebook full of their names and personalities, and two entire buckets full of figurines. Sometimes we take so long to play it on the game that we wouldn't have any time to play it at all. I look back and wonder why we spent so much time developing these characters. We would only live in the universe for a few hours. However, I am immensely grateful that we did. That treasured crinkle notebook became the source for the majority of Bridget and I's novels. The game above became Bridget and I's first story we wrote together. That story was 205 pages long. At the time I read this essay, Bridget and I are working on the second draft of that same story, perfecting into something we were both really proud of. It feels like the story I was meant to write. I never would have found it if it weren't for the weekend spent crawling from chair school and back. Where am I? I asked for Ben, dragging him out of little Einstein's rocket ship and onto our carpet, also known as a foreign asteroid. Let's read the sign, Bridget exclaims, setting a piece of cardboard so Jenna could stare at it with her forever frozen eyes. It says here that we have been sent from another planet, and we need to find partners and furniture. In order for them to start to round, we drop them into furniture field buckets, head first. This game is also one of our favorites, later becoming known as the Next 16. It is our newest writing endeavor, but this game has an importance greater than writing to me. It made me realize that I often used the people game to understand people and events I did not know. I have always thought of myself as an empathetic person, being able to feel emotions so powerful that it was like I was going through the same thing. I hated an unrealistic game. I refused to deny a character the ability to go through difficult emotions. I had to learn my own lessons through their eyes. These lessons have transformed some of those integral parts of my personality, as I'm always trying to look through the eyes of everyone I interact with. Everyone watch out! Bridget shouts, tipping a toy bus onto its side. A massive windstorm has hit the city. Kate! Bridget laughs, breaking character. Look at them! The carriage has topped down to all sorts of strange positions. We begin laughing hysterically. Bridget and I loved a serious, realistic game, but the best games involved us laughing our hearts out together. Looking back on these games, I realized I gained many skills, compassion, and storytelling, but the biggest gain of all was a strong friendship I grew with my sister. There's no one I cherish more than my twin sister, Bridget. To me, the people game isn't a game at all. It's a bomb to my sister and I. This unbreakable, mighty friendship that causes us to act the same and talk the same, too. It is a reminder that I am the luckiest person alive, that even though it's not always easy being a pair, I could spend my whole life with this remarkable person I am lucky enough to call my best friend. It is this pure form of joy that comes not from the figurines you hold in their hands. By believing in the people game, I believe in the powerful, fantastic, and beautiful thing that is my connection to my sister. When I look back on my life, these days are my favorites, because I got to spend them with my favorite person. I believe in finding something, whether it be a game, sport, or activity, that turns your siblings into your best friends.